Time to hunt. What's big and grey and is far too big to fit on the sofa? Boom. I present to you the Capcom Home Arcade. It's in your home, but it's not technically an arcade. Right. So this is an interesting thing. They've kind of taken the idea of the mini consoles that are doing the rounds at the moment and turned it into something of a macro console. <laughs> this thing is big. Can you tell by the way you can see it? And it's big. Yeah. Um, blimey. So uh, the company uh, Koch Media. Koch Media? I can't pronounce German for real. How would we pronounce that in English? Coke Media, perhaps? I don't know. It's K-O-C-H, anyway. Have licensed some games off Capcom and the use of their logo, quite obviously, to produce what is a very large thing you plug into your telly box and then play games on. And yeah, it's heavy and it's robust. They're not crazily heavy. You probably want to be playing it on a table because it'd be difficult on your lap. And it's got two joysticks, two sets of six buttons, and a, a start and select button. It's more of a coin and start button, really, on them. And they're all kind of uh, painted to fit in with the Capcom logo. And the whole thing is moulded to the shape of a Capcom logo. Interestingly, people uh, like myself, who keep an eye on AliExpress and stuff for dodgy knockoff consoles, noticed a few months ago there were dodgy knockoff consoles in this shape, but without the Capcom logo. I mean, we knew what it was because they announced this months ago, but uh, it's interesting how quickly the dodgy manufacturers come up with this stuff, isn't it? So, yeah, um, I suppose the first question you're asking upon seeing this, in fact, look, here's a proper aerial shot so you can see the whole thing, um, is why is it so unbelievably uh, grotesquely ugly? And the answer to that is... Uh, well, um, according to the designers, they didn't want to make just another black box that you plug into your telly, which I can fully understand, so, you know, give it a bit of personality, but that personality has turned it into a giant Capcom logo, and the Capcom logo is just the word Capcom written out in yellow with a blue outline. So, um, yeah, and it's a weird shape, and it's all a bit strange, frankly. Um, I do wonder... Uh, as many have, in fact, if there is an element of, oh, I wonder if the sort of big time YouTubers will put this up on the, you know, bit of IKEA furniture behind them, and then the Capcom logo will be seen in a few future videos or something, because I just can't imagine why you would do this. <laughs> it, it looks bad. Also, buttons are camouflaged. <sighs> I mean, you, you don't look at them while you're playing, so it doesn't really matter, but it's, it's just kind of the principle of it. Deary me. I mean, this is, the, this is the ugliest baby that Mother Capcom have ever laid, isn't it? It really is. Um, I just, yeah, yeah. Don't know what to say, really. Um, blimey. Well, let's just get on with it. Um, also, if you are a big-time YouTuber and want to put this in the background, it won't fit in a coax. Too wide, you see. Uh, you're going to have to put it on your Billy bookcase or whatever. Right. <clears throat> let's look at the quality of it, then. Quality super bloody high from a physical point of view certainly this gray stuff here is all rubberized and very strong nice bit of uh, strong plastic on the top the parts are all sanwa who make well for my money the best joysticks your mileage may vary if you prefer um you know other manufacturers or whatever but they are my personal faves the ones i use when i'm building stuff and yeah that's it really it's a big joystick with 12 big buttons and four smaller buttons not much in the way of connectors on it. If you look underneath, oh, there we are. Oh, hang on, wait for it. Home arcade. My God, um, there's a sticker on it. <clears throat> it says licensed by. We were going for Coke when we Coke Media sticker. You got to be 12 to play it. Apparently, if not, your limbs catch fire. But on the back are a couple of connectors, as one would assume. There is a power button that glows red when it's on. There is a power connector, which is just micro USB, your standard uh, 2 amp 5 volt stuff, HDMI out, and mystery external. Dun, 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 dun. Yep, USB port. Currently used for absolutely nothing, but I do enjoy a USB port and things like this because it means they could potentially be more hackable than if they didn't have it, so that could potentially be a good thing down the line. There are firmware updates and things possible for this, uh, and it connects directly to Wi-Fi, surprisingly. Uh, so it just does it via that. Well, I say just does it via that. From what I can tell, um, an awful lot of people have had huge problems connecting this to their Wi-Fi. Um, anyone with a mesh network seems to be right out of luck. And, yeah, just not working with a huge number of people's Wi-Fi connections. Worked fine with mine first time, so I cannot comment on that. But uh, I do feel your pain, brethren. So, 
Oh, what else do you get in the box? You also get HDMI cable, quite a long one. It's a grey colour to match that. A grey micro USB cable that's very long, which is very sensible because, you know, you don't be sitting right up against your 40 inch television these days because you probably won't be able to see what's going on, frankly. And a grey uh, plug adapter, which is nice. You normally don't get these these days. They usually just uh, assume you'll use one of the 409 of them you have knocking around your house. But this is suspiciously identical to the looking to the Apple ones, um, just in grey. So I don't know what's going on there. Also, I've heard Americans refer to these as a wall wart, which does amuse me. Anyway, you also get the world's shittest manual. <laughs> this is proper bad. Um, it's a quick guide, all right? So the only bit in English is basically the warranty, technical support, and this. And just tells you very basically to plug it in and then it'll play. And that's it. It also tells you that the high scores and settings are in the corner, but doesn't tell you in order to select them, you have to push uh, the diagonals on the joysticks. Yeah, you probably should mention that. I mean, I worked it out, but it's a weird thing. Do you know what I mean? Right, <clears throat> we need to look at the box now. Let's move this out of the way. Oop, 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 oop. Ah, my hernia. Right, monolith. That's monolith music. So yeah, as it advertises, oh god, you can't. It's so big, it's eclipsing the light. Um, Sixteen classic Capcom games included. Look, there it is. I hope you're standing on your head. Um, yeah, only 16 games, which is quite small for something like this, but they are proper arcade versions. Well, the emulations of proper arcade versions run through a version of Final Burn Alpha. And there was a lot of controversy over that, guys, because, like, they kind of licensed it, and apparently it shouldn't have maybe been licensed, and, like, one of the main developers has been sort of kicked off the project or something, or they've restarted the project under the new name of Final Burn Neo. Do you know what? I couldn't even keep up with it, but there was a lot of uh, dissent and a lot of controversy over the use of the emulators in this thing. But there we are. It's now physical and we're holding it. Violence. Just remember that, guys. M. Violence. That means that M from James Bond will come round and kick the living crap out of you if you don't use this correctly. So, can we see what games are on the side? We can. Um, it's... <laughs> I th oh God, how am I going to do this? I think we're going to have to just cut to a photo I've taken of it and uh, go on from there, um, which isn't very physically interesting. No, no actually, I'm not going to do that because that would be boring. There we are. We'll do it from the side like this. So, features. High definition 1080p display output via HDMI. That's a good thing. Most of these things output 720p, so 1080p is a bit better, frankly. Pixel perfect display with various screen mode options. Mm -mm -mm. Online high score leaderboard. Got to get your Wi-Fi to connect for that, but there we go. <coughs> Sanwa blah, 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 sticks with 8-way blah, 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 directional gates and OBSF buttons. There we are. There's some technical stuff if you enjoy such things. They're really nice joysticks. Really, really nice expensive joysticks. That's all we really need to know. And online updates capability via Wi-Fi. Internet connection required and apparently quite a specific router. So you got 12 games. So the big whoop about this is it's got uh, two games now which haven't been released to the home market before. So let us go and see what games are included, and I'll talk about them in tedious attention to detail. So, <clears throat> starting off with 1944, The Loop Master. That's a pretty old school shooter. Uh, it's lots of fun. I like The Loop Master. It's, I think it's the fifth 19XX game, as they call it. Start off with 1942. I think this actually came after. Nine, there was one called 19XX. Oh, it confuses me. Basically, I'm pretty sure this was the fifth one, and it was the last one to be least released in the arcades. There was like another one, but it was some god awful Xbox Live arcade thing that just wasn't any good at all. Uh, I think so. Yeah, people are saying all oh, this has been released for. I'm not really sure where you could play 1944 at the Loop Master at home before. Uh, it was on GameTap, which is some weird online broadband service thing from years gone by, but uh, that seems to be it that all I could find. Maybe it was released in a compilation, I'm just not aware. Next up, one of the big ones, Alien vs Predator. Alien vs Predator is great. So it's a side-scrolling brawler, and it's one of my faves, actually. Characters are great. Um, you've got uh, Arnie's character, Dutch Schaefer, from the first Predator film, looking completely different and with a weird, like, robot arm. You've got a Japanese 
Japanese lady who has a handgun she shoots at things with. You've got two different predators, like a standard movie predator and a chunkier predator to kill all the aliens with. And, well, these brawling games live or die on variety. The variety of the moves, variety of enemies, variety of weapons you can pick up and stuff. This one is great. It's just so much fun. There's so many different ways of doing stuff. All the characters are completely different. It is really fantastic and never available in any sort of a home format before. Of course, if you're anything like me, you've probably been emulating it on MAME for well over a decade. But hey, <clears throat> this is the first official release. Next up, Armoured Warriors. Uh, this is another scrolly fightery one um, with big mechs, as in, you know, giant robot-y things. Uh, again, this is quite... I, I have a quite a soft spot for the old Armoured Warriors. And there's nice features like um, you can pick up arms of other robots and attach them to yourselves to change attacks and stuff like that. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the designs in it. Um, a, a lot of them look quite samey, these big robots, but it's super good fun to just smash through all the bastards and win through to the end of the game. That's how these things work, you know. Now, really like Armored Warriors, so that's a good one. Um, it was released, it's in that Capcom beat em up bundle, which they uh, put out relatively recently. You can buy it on like most formats. I've got it on the Switch, I believe. It's quite a nice setup. Uh, Capcom Sports Club. This is one nobody ever talks about, Capcom Sports Club. So it's three different games. Uh, football, uh, and that's crap, so we won't talk about that anymore. Basketball, and frankly that's not great either. It's better than the football, but it's a bit, it's a bit weak source. But there's a really nice tennis game in it, the third one. The tennis on the Capcom Sports Club is one of my faves. I do emulate it every so often for a bit of uh, fun arcade tennis action. Um, and s s nobody has said that this is like an exclusive to this, as if it's been released at home before, but I, I don't know what's on. I genuinely have no knowledge of this being released for any home format, but apparently it was. If you know, put it in the comments, and everyone will ignore you, because people on the internet don't like truth or facts. Um, then we've got... We've got Final Fight. I don't like Final Fight. I never particularly like Final Fight. Final Fight is boring, and it always was boring. Stop being so nostalgic for it, everybody. So, I've got uh, in our office, I have a big old arcade machine, it plays everything. People, this has happened three times now, people said, oh, can we play Final Fight? I'm like, of course we can. Put on Final Fight, five minutes in, I remember this being more fun than this. Golden Axe Disease, another game of the same thing. As we were saying with Alien vs Predator, it's all about the variety on this. On Final Fight, you've got the same handful of bloody attacks hitting the same few guys over and over and over an occasional interesting boss and if you're very lucky you can pick up a knife or a potato peel or whatever it looks like and a bit of pipe and all that kind of stuff oh dearie me the only good thing about final fight frankly is that you get to see the mayor of a major american city take his shirt off and drink some whiskey he found in a bin i mean you can't argue with that can you next up Giga Wing or Giga Wing or Giga Wing, which is my way of pronouncing it now just to make everybody hate me. It's a classic bullet hell shell shooter. I was going to say it's a classic bullet hell shelter there. That'd be an interesting use in real life, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, there's a lot of bullets on the screen. Don't get hit by them while you shoot back. It's got spaceships. It's really good. Um, it has a reputation for being really good, and that's because it is really good, frankly. You can't say much else about it. I'm not a massive bullet hell uh, shooter fan myself, but I do enjoy a bit of Giga Wing. It is just a quality game from start to finish. It was released on the Dreamcast, incidentally, if we're talking about home ports. Let's talk about the home ports for all of them now, because I have up till this point. No, I didn't. Didn't mention it for Final Fight. Final Fight was released on fucking everything. Good God. Um, I mean, I had it for the Atari ST. Um, it, it's just, it was just on all the home formats at the time. Speaking Speaking of things that were on all the home formats at the time, Ghouls and Ghosts. I love Ghouls and Ghosts. I always have, and I probably always will. Disclaimer, that may not occur. Um, no, really like Ghouls and Ghosts. Really like Super Ghouls and Ghosts. The Super Nintendo version is completely different, but this is obviously the arcade one. I bought it for my ZX Spectrum. I later had it on the Atari ST. Then I had it on the Mega Drive, which is a great conversion. It's just incredibly brutally difficult, but also scrupulously fair and good fun. Um, yeah, I mean, people say Dark Souls is hard. Have a go at Ghouls and Ghosts then, mate. Bloody hell. Next up, Cyberbots. They're, they're bots, they're cyber. They have a bit of a fight. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighter. Um, it's, it's one of these sort of forgotten games. It's got Jin in it. Jin Sayatomi, who appears in uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, that's where he came from with his robot Blodia. 
I believe it was in Tech Romancer too, but uh, don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, it's it's a bit different this one. I mean, it plays very much like a Capcom one-on-one -on -one fighter, but with giant mechs uh, smashing each other up. M my weakness with this is that I slightly find it a bit difficult to see what's going on at times due to the sort of designs of the robots um, when they're moving around. Like sometimes it gets a bit difficult to follow. I find. Don't know. Maybe that's just me. But yeah, I like Cyberbots quite a bit. Uh, it was released on the Saturn and PlayStation, but I believe in Japan only. Then. Captain Commando, who was the Capcom mascot for a while. Capcom, you see, Captain Commando. Hey, it's another scrolly, beat em uppy brawler thing. Um, it has really crazy designs. I mean, Captain Commando's joined by his friends, who's like a weird purple mummy and like a baby piloting a big green mech. It's all very odd, but um, it's not as exciting as it sounds. Sadly, it's very, very repetitious. It's just, it's just not really very good. It doesn't stand up in this day and age, which is a shame. Um, it's a little bit less repetitive than Final Fight, but it's, mm, yeah, and the graphics are a bit early. It's not. It's 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 fine. It's not a bad game, but it's yeah. You're not going to get much enjoyment out of it in this day and age. Uh, had a SNES port, I believe, for the home market. That's about all I know about that. Uh, Eco. Oh, it's also in the Capcom beat 'em up collection. I think what we mentioned earlier. Eco Fighters. So this is interesting. It's a sort of side-scrolling shooter. But you've got like a weird globe thing. You can rotate around your ship with two of the buttons. It's um, yeah. It's quite a nice game. It's a little bit different, a little bit more uh, interesting and fun to play than just a straight shooter. And you soon get sort of the hang of uh, manoeuvring the orb thing around. It's nice. I like Kiko Fighters. I would give it six and a half out of ten off the top of my head. I haven't played it for quite some time, though, to be honest, other than briefly on this to make sure it was working. Um, and where did you get it now? I think this was part of the Capcom Classics collection. Uh, I think the second volume of it, that was out on PS2, Xbox, PSP, so yeah, you could at least play it at home. Something else you could quite easily play at home, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, which is Capcom having a joke with their own naming conventions. So yeah, I love this, always really enjoyed this game, it's just a sort of competitive uh, block-based puzzle game, basically, and the more lines and blo well, the more, the more giant diamonds you build and smash, the more random nasty bits appear on the opponent's screen until their screen fills up and you beat them. A bit like head-to-head -head Tetris, but with a slightly different gameplay mechanic. And there's also a lot of little nods to um, Capcom's various franchises in the backgrounds and the characters and all that kind of stuff. Really like this. Um, I, I had it for PC back in the day, unbelievably. I've got a Game Boy Advance cartridge of it. It's been out on loads of consoles and there's an HD version on PSN and Xbox Live, or there used to be at least. That would be... Um, Xbox 360, PS3 these days, so I don't know if that's still going, but uh, if you haven't played it, yeah, really good game, but to be honest, you probably want the HD remix and not the original arcade version for that one, so meh for it being on this. Uh, what have we got next? Street Fighter 2 apostrophe hyper fighting. So, well, we knew there was going to be a Street Fighter 2 in here somewhere, but why? on God's giddy earth they decided to give us this version, I don't know. Uh, it makes no sense to me at all. So this is like the the version before Super Street Fighter 2. So this is kind of the most refined of the games that just feature the early fighters, so there's no Kami, Fei Long, uh, DJ, T-Hawk, or Akuma, thinking about it. None of those are in it. I mean, these days you want Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, don't you? Isn't that like the baseline these days? I just, I don't know. just feel like they had to put a Street Fighter 2 in it and just went for a weird version for some reason. I mean, I do like the way that they haven't just gone for all the obvious games, and there's a lot of interesting tidbits and, uh, you know, games you can't get anywhere else and all that kind of stuff. That is great, but um, still no particular reason to just give us an old Street Fighter 2, which frankly is not one of the best versions. Then we have another exclusive, guys. Because that, that's there's been versions of Street Fighter 2 released on all things, everywhere, everywhere. Pro Gear, steampunky, I suppose you could describe it. A sort of semi-bullet hell shooter. It gets a bit busy at times, put it that way. It's from Cave. If you know your Cave, they are bloody masters of the shoot 'em up. I really enjoyed it. It's what I played most on this while testing it out, actually. Um, still no good at it, but yeah, it's a really, really fun game. Um, I like the way that it sort of calms down a bit from being constantly bullet-helly. Uh, yeah, 
great game. Never had a home version. Well, say it's never had a home version. There was some sort of weird mobile phone version in Japan I found uh, mention of, but it doesn't seem to be a very good way to play the game, so yeah. Next up, Darkstalkers, the Night Warriors. Darkstalkers is kind of Capcom's forgotten fighting franchise. I mean, people remember characters like uh, Felicia and Morrigan. Dimitri, maybe, to an extent. Basically, there's a load of weird monsters, and they get together and have a fighting tournament. Because why wouldn't they? Um, yeah, I really like Darkstalkers. I played the second one. Um, oh, God, right. So the names of these are awful. I mean, when I first saw Darkstalkers the Night Warriors, I thought it was the second in the series. There are, there are basically three versions of the game. Um, very basically, oh man, that's a kettle of fish to go into. Where does the Chaos Tower fit? Um, so I thought this was the second game in the series because I always knew that as Night Warriors, but no, this is the first game in the series, Darkstalkers the Night Warriors. Then the second game, at least uh, in outside Japan, was called Night Warriors Darkstalkers Revenge. So if it has Darkstalkers first, it's the first game. And if it has Night Warriors first, it's the second game. And the third game is just called Darkstalkers 3. That was a lot easier. A vampire saviour, I believe, in Japan. So that's all good, isn't it? What's not so good is... Why is this the first game? The, the second game is just, frankly, massively expanded. And the third one again. I don't know why they've given us the first. It just feels so cut down as compared to the others. It has a different mixes of the music, and that's about it, really. I don't understand why they've gone for that. It's just not the best way to be playing the game. And it is a very good game. It's a very Capcom uh, fightery feeling, but I have a real soft spot for Dark Stalkers, and I find it very sad that they don't uh, really do anything with it anymore. Then Strider. Strider Hero. There's kind of... Well, if you want some Soviet cyber ninja action, th this is a good way of getting it. Um, yeah, see, I loved Strider back in the day. I had it on my ZX Spectrum, and then I had it on um, Atari ST again, actually. I had a Mega Drive version. I, I, I still kind of like Strider for the designs things. I just don't think it holds up as well as perhaps many of the other games on here. If you've never played Strider before and you're not used to that sort of era of arcade game, you probably won't get much out of it, which is a shame because it's, it's kind of a classic in its way. Um, but there we are. And obviously Strider himself uh, turns up in Marvelous Capcom and stuff, doesn't he? Yeah, this was uh, released on everything, as I said earlier. Um, if you want to play an interesting Strider game, go for Strider 2 on the PlayStation. Fantastic game that nobody ever mentions for some reason. N and that's not the same game as Strider. Strider 2 on the home computers and Mega Drive. That is a separate game and is terrible. Absolutely terrible. You want Strider 2, PS1. Oh, we didn't mention Darkstalkers. Oh, that was released all over the shop. Um, PlayStation had it. Um, it was a good version of Darkstalkers 3 for PlayStation. The Saturn had various versions of it. You can play that on many things. PSP version, that was the Chaos Tower 1 I mentioned earlier. And finally, Mega Man, the power battle. This is odd. So it's uh, a sort of weird boss rush, I suppose. Best way of describing it, spin-off of the Mega Man games for the arcades. You don't play through levels to get to the boss. You just fight a boss, then another boss, then another boss. And every time you beat a boss, you get to use their weapon. Some weapons more effective against other bosses than other ones, so you kind of want to be going in a certain order. Um, I don't really... It's, it's not that great, to be honest. It's so simple and cut down. It's It so feels like just bits of another game that they've hacked together, really. Um, don't quite understand it. Um, it's it's all right for five minutes. We aren't going to get much joy out of it. Also, there's a sequel. Uh, I don't know why they didn't do the sequel again and give us the first one again. Very odd. Uh, you could play it at home previously on the Mega Man Anniversary Collection, which was on... Uh, PS2, Xbox, was there a GameCube version? I'm going to say yes and risk it. Mm. So, blimey, that, that was a lot of games, wasn't it? Oh no, I've knocked the camcorder, don't worry, it's gone back now. Right, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, manoeuvre this out of the way and put the actual machine back. I mean, you still can't see it probably because it's bloody huge, but let's not get into that. So yeah, um, what is it like to use and play on, I suppose, is the first thing. The answer is, well, it's very nice from a technical point of view because it's got fantastic bloody joysticks and buttons. So it feels absolutely great. It feels properly like an arcade machine and not an arcade machine that's all been knocked about and has got cigarette burns all over it, but like a proper brand new one. It's bloody lovely, really high quality, expensive parts, and it shows. The oh, <clears throat> this is where it gets a bit dark, I'm afraid. So, 
Uh, the settings and things are incredibly bare bones. Really minimal settings, right? Um, visually, no scan lines or anything, which is usually a good thing because scan lines just put over things just look a bit crap and there's never a proper CRT emulation of these things. They try at it and fail miserably. Um, all you can set is 4x3, the original aspect ratio, or horribly stretch it to 16x9 because you're a lunatic. I mean, no, nobody's going to do that. And the only other setting is to turn on or off some god-awful, very simple anti-aliasing smoothing thing, which looks absolutely awful, as you would assume. So basically, you leave it on 4x3, no smoothing, or it looks bloody awful. <clears throat> Don't really know what else to say to that. Um, there's also no dip switch settings at all. So you can't go in and change the difficulty of the games as you actually could on the arcade boards. There is nothing. Nothing. It's so minimal options, it is unbelievable, frankly. Um, and the emulation itself, yeah, it's pretty solid, but it's not quite there because the sound glitches occasionally. You're playing it and the sound will occasionally just drop out for a second and then come back. Well, a fraction of a second, usually. Don't know what all that's about very odd um, and kind of spoils it a bit. I mean, it's not like game ruining or anything, but it's not good. You don't want that going on, do you? Also, I went into the control check on the menu just to make sure the buttons are working and it went absolutely berserk and I had to turn it off, which is not really relevant. It's a pretty useless feature anyway, but um, hey, I just thought I'd mention it. Now, there is something that really bugs me about this. Massively bugs me, right? So when you're playing a game, if you want to quit, you press the coin and start buttons together, and it takes you back to the menu. Except it goes through this pissing title intro sequence every time, where it so shows the Coke Media, and then the um, Capcom Home Arcade thing, and goes in, and it's slow. It takes exactly this amount of time to quit the game and get back to the menu. And if that's not enough, if you press any button to try and speed it up, you can't. You can't quit it, you can't get out of it, but it remembers your button press, and as soon as it gets in the menu, it starts 1944. Because it remembers you pressed a button right at the start of its bloody title sequence. So if you knock anything or something while it's doing that, bad luck, you're going to be loading 1944, and then to come out of 1944, you've got to quit again and then sit through the pissing bloody stupid intro again. <sighs> come on, guys, fix that in an update, please. Add some dip switches in an update as well. Maybe add some more games down the line. Who knows? They haven't said what they're doing with it. So overall, well, it's a thing, isn't it? Um, I suppose we must now talk about the slightly sticky facts of how expensive it is. It's £200. I don't know what that is in dollars. I don't believe this is released for the American market, oddly. Um, £200. I mean, I appreciate that these are like super expensive proper joysticks and buttons, but £200 for 16 games. You could buy like an Xbox One S brand new for that at the moment, um, probably without even any money off. I mean, yeah, it's insanely expensive for what it is. Um, who is it aimed at? People who want really high quality parts, but um, just, money is no object. So, so I, I don't really know. I mean, I'm going to be selling this immediately after this review because I need that money back, or at least a substantial percentage of that money back. Because um, that, that's a lot of cash for something like this. And something that absolutely gutted me, I heard beforehand you could use it as a um, standard controller. You know, just plug it into Windows, picks it up as a default controller. Okay, you've now got two sets of controls that you can plug straight seat, but no, it's bollocks. It, it just doesn't. You, you can't use it as a, you certainly can't use it as a PC controller or a controller or anything else in any way I could find out. So um, if you can, I don't know about it. And when I tried, it certainly didn't work. So I am just assuming that whoever said that early on was full of poop. And that's a shame because this really is 
and a very expensive way to play those 16 games. I mean, generally, I would play those through PC emulation through my uh, very nice uh, tournament stick I got for fighting games, which I think was about 60 quid, and I can play everything on it, you know? I mean, this is all officially licensed, though, and some money will be going back to Capcom. I would say going back to the people who made the game, but they probably left the company like a million years ago. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just insanely expensive. It's, I mean, it's beautifully built, don't get me wrong, lovely parts, but for £200, the emulation just isn't there with the sound glitches, your options aren't there, and it's stupidly ugly. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way of putting it. It looks bloody terrible. Um, I yeah, nah, nah, and other noises. It's an interesting idea, uh, but it's for a very niche market. And it's just too much of the old Spondelix to uh, justify You know, when you're paying such an insanely premium price, you expect premium hardware, which you've got, but you also expect kind of premium gameplay experience and the sound cutting out every now and then and no dip switches is not providing that, really.